Abraham said to them, Now what is your errand? O you who have been sent by God. They said, We have been sent towards a guilty people who have severed their ties with God, that we may rain stones of wet clay upon them, which are earmarked from your Lord for inflicting punishment on those guilty of excesses. God says, Then it came to pass, we brought forth all the believers who were there in that township to keep them safe and secure. But in fact, we found there only a single house of those who had submitted to us, and that was the house of Lot. And after destroying the townships, we left in them a sign to serve as a lesson to those who fear the woeful punishment. And in the case of Moses, there is also a sign. Remember the time when we sent him to Pharaoh with a clear authoritative proof. But he turned away from Moses in the pride of his power and said, He is a sorcerer, or rather a madman. So we took him and his forces to task and threw them into the sea. Indeed, he, Pharaoh, was himself blameworthy. And there is a sign in the destruction of the tribe of Ad, when we let loose on them the destructive, wild-blowing wind. It spared nothing whatever it came upon, but reduced it to dust-like stuff of rotten bones. And there is a sign in the case of the tribe of Thamud. Behold, they were told, Enjoy yourselves for a while. But they disdainfully disobeyed the commandment of their Lord, so a thunderbolt struck them while they looked on utterly confused. And they were not able even to get up on their feet, nor could they get anybody's help to defend themselves. And we destroyed the people of Noah before them. They too were disobedient people. As for the heaven, we have built it with our mighty power. And verily we are makers of the vast extent. And the earth, we have spread it out in how excellently we lay things out. And we have created all things in pairs, so that you may give heed to the wonderful creation of God. Therefore say to them, wing your way to Allah. Verily I am a plain warner to you from him. Never set up another god to be worshipped along with Allah. Surely I am a plain warner to you from him. Even so, no messenger came to their predecessors, but they said, He is a sorcerer, or rather a madman. Have they bequeathed this way of saying things to one another? The fact is they themselves are a people who transgress limits. So turn away from them and their foul way of talk. There lies no blame on you for what they do. Yet keep on exhorting the people, for verily exhortation proves useful to the believers. And I have created the jinn, fiery-natured and haughty, and the ordinary people, only that they may worship me. Prophet, tell them that no provision do I require from them, nor do I require that they should feed me. Surely it is Allah alone who is the great sustainer, the Lord of immense power, the Almighty. Those who do injustice to our messengers should meet the fate of miseries like the fate of their fellows of old. Therefore do not let them ask me to hasten on the punishment which awaits them. Yet they should not forget that destruction is in store for those who disbelieve on account of that day of theirs the punishment of which they have been promised. El Tur, the Mount, with the name of Allah, the Most Gracious, the Ever Merciful, I call to witness the Mount of Revelation and a book inscribed on open, unrolled parchments and the ever so much frequented house and its elevated roof and the dry and empty sea, that the punishment of your Lord is bound to descend. None can avert it. The day the sky shall reel and rock in a state of terrific commotion, 
and the mountain shall move fast. On that day, destruction awaits those who cry lies to the messengers of God, who indulge in idle talk, and who are busy in vain pursuits. On that day, they shall be urged to and thrust into the fire of Jehenna with a violent and irresistible urging. They will be told, This is the fire you used to cry lies to. Is this an illusion, or is it you who are still unable to see? Burn you in it, and whether you show patience or you show it not, it will be the same to you, for you will be requited only for your deeds. Verily, those who guard it against evil will be in gardens and in a state of bliss. Rejoicing at those gifts which their Lord will have granted them, and they will render him thanks that their Lord has guarded them against the torments of hell. It will be said to them, Eat and drink, and enjoy yourselves as a reward of your good deeds. They will on that day be reclining on couches ranged in parallel rows, and we shall pair them with fair and pure horries. We shall unite with those who believe such of their children who follow them in faith, even though they do not attain the high standard of their forefathers' righteousness. Yet we will not deprive them the least of the reward of their deeds. Every soul stands pledged for his own deeds, and is neither deprived of the reward nor can escape the punishment of his bad deeds. We shall provide these owners of paradise with such fruit and meat in abundance as they desire. Therein they will pass one to another a cup of refreshing drink, which shall induce neither foul talk nor sin. Their own young sons, as pure as though they were virgin pearls embedded in their shells, shall go round them and they will accost one another asking mutual questions. They will say, Before this we were very much haunted by fear, in the midst of our family about the consequences of our deeds. But Allah has been gracious to us, and has saved us from the torment of the burning blast. We used to call upon him before in prayer. Surely he alone is the most beneficent, the ever merciful. So, prophet, keep on exhorting, as by the grace of your Lord, you are neither a soothsayer nor a madman. Yet they say about you, he is only a poet. And we await the vicissitudes which time will bring upon him. Say, await you the calamities, I too am with you among those who are awaiting. As a matter of fact, their reason prompts them to think of the prophet in these terms. They are, rather, a people transgressing limits. They say, he has fabricated it. The fact is that they have no belief in God. Let them then bring forth a discourse like this Qur'an, if they are truthful in their objection. Have they been created without a creative agency or purpose? Or are they their own creators? Have they created the heavens and the earth? The thing is only that they have no faith in God. Do they hold the treasures of your Lord? Or are they the Lord supreme? Have they the means through which they can overhear the Lord? If so, let their listener bring forth a clear authoritative proof, just as the prophet of God does. O oh, disbelievers, as you believe, does he have daughters while you have sons? Do you ask a reward from them for your conveying the message so that they are weighed down with a load of undue debts and so are finding it hard to pay? Do they have the knowledge of the unseen so that they write it down and judge things in its light? Do they intend to wage a war against you? But remember, it is those who disbelieve that will be the victims of their own strategy of war. Have they a God other than Allah? Indeed, highly exalted is Allah far above all the things they associate with him. And even if they see a fragment of the sky falling down in the form of punishment, they would say, it is only piled up clouds and not a sign of punishment whatsoever.
So leave them alone till they meet that day of theirs, the day of the battle of Badr, when they will be driven into the fire of warfare. The day when their stratagem of warfare will be of no avail to them, and no help will be rendered to them from any quarter. There awaits the wrongdoers, yet another punishment, even prior to that punishment of war. But most of them do not know. Prophet Await with patience and perseverance the implementation of the judgment of your Lord. You are under our loving care and protection. And extol the holiness of your Lord, along with his praises when you rise from sleep for prayer. And proclaim his glory for part of the night, and also at the declining of the stars, when the night is about to end. al Najm Parts of the Qur'an With the name of Allah, the Most Gracious, the Ever Merciful I call to witness every part of the Qur'an when it is revealed That your comrade Muhammad has neither deviated from true guidance in his practices Nor has he erred in his beliefs He does not say anything out of his own fanciful desire This Qur'an is nothing but pure revelation revealed to him by God the Lord of mighty powers has taught him this discourse. The Lord whose powers become manifest in manifold and frequent ways, with the result that he, this messenger of God, attained perfection and fullest vigor both intellectually and physically. And he attained to the zenith of heights in his spiritual ascension. Then he drew near to him, and afterwards he descended to humankind for their guidance, so that he became, as it were, one cord to two bowls, or closer still. Then he revealed that excellent and mighty Quranic revelation which he had to send to his servant Muhammad, whose mind made no mistake in the interpretation of that which he saw during the ascension. Will you doubt and dispute with him? Concerning that sign which he saw with his own eyes, it being no figment of imagination? And of course, he saw him in his other manifestation to him, yet another time. It was near the Sidra, which stands at the farthest end of knowledge. Near where also is the garden which is the real eternal abode. This was when the sublime thing, the divine manifestation, which was to cover Sidra, had covered it. When he saw the divine manifestation, his eye deviated not from the certainty of the truth, nor did it wander away from the invincible faith on which he stood. It was the moment when he saw the greatly important signs of his Lord. Have you had a look at Lot and Oza, the gods of idolaters, and another, the third, goddess of no account, Manat, what an ignoble idea you have. Are you to have sons and he the daughters? That indeed is an unjust division and unbecoming from your own point of view, which looks upon the birth of a daughter with condemnation. The fact is that these are mere names bearing no significance which you have coined, you and your forefathers for which Allah has revealed no authority. These idol worshippers follow nothing but mere conjectures and the fancies of their own minds. They do this even though true guidance has already come to them from their Lord. Can a person always have whatever he desires? Rather, all the blessings of the hereafter, as well as those of this present life, belong to Allah. Behold, so many an angel is there in the heavens, but their intercession can be of no avail, except after Allah has given them permission regarding him who he wills and with whom he is pleased. Verily, it is only those who do not believe in the hereafter and who give feminine names to the angels because they ascribe them to Allah as his daughters. But they have no knowledge of the matter. They follow nothing but conjecture. Yet by no means can a conjecture be a substitute for the established truth. So turn aside from him who turns away from our remembrance, 
and seeks nothing but the present life. That is the highest attainment of their knowledge. Verily, your Lord knows very well those who go astray from his path, as he knows very well those who follow the right guidance. And all that lies in the heavens, and all that lies in the earth, belongs to Allah alone. The result of this is that he recompenses the evildoers according to the evil of their deeds, and rewards those who do good deeds with the fairest reward. Those who avoid grave sins and open shameful deeds, but who are sometimes guilty only of minor offenses, will find your Lord is Lord of immense protection and resorts to his mercy in such cases. He knows you full well, since when he created you from the earth and when you were embryos in the wombs of your mothers. So make no pretensions to the purity of your souls. It is he who knows best, who truly and fully guards against evil. Have you taken notice of the one who turns away from guidance and gives but a little in the cause of Allah and does it grudgingly? Has he the knowledge of the unseen so that he can see his own future? Has he not been informed of the contents of the scriptures of Moses and those of Abraham who thoroughly and faithfully fulfilled the commandments of his Lord? The scriptures say that no soul that bears a burden shall bear the burden of another soul, and that a human being will have to his account what he strives for, and that his striving shall necessarily be seen and evaluated. Then will he be recompensed fully and fairly, and that to your Lord is the eventual return, and that it is he alone who makes people laugh and weep, and that it is he alone who causes death and brings to life and that he himself created the two species, male and female, from a sperm drop when it is emitted, that it is he upon whom rest the raising of the dead again to life, and that it is he who fulfills the needs and endows the gift of capital contentment and grants wealth, and that it is he who is the lord of Sirius, a star worshipped by some polytheist and that he destroyed the ancient tribe of Ad and the tribe of Thamud, so that he spared not a single soul of them. And he destroyed the people of Noah before them. They were extremely wicked and most rebellious. And that it is he who totally pulled down the subverted cities, Sodom and Gomorrah of the people of Lot. So they were completely covered with that which overwhelms when the punishment befalls. O oh, human being, which of the bounties of your Lord will you then doubt and dispute? This prophet is a warner towards all the people of the worlds, from among the series of warners to one particular people of old. The hour of punishment that was promised to come has drawn nigh. None can avert this doom besides Allah. Do you then wonder at this announcement and yet pay no heed to it? For on hearing the mention of the hour of punishment, you laugh rather than weep? And you remain proudly heedless and haughty. You should better prostrate yourselves before Allah and worship Him. al Qamar, The Moon With the name of Allah, the Most Gracious, the Ever-Merciful, the hour of doom of the enemies of the Prophet has drawn nigh, and to indicate it, the moon is rent asunder. Yet, whenever these disbelievers see a sign, they turn away, paying it no heed, and say, It is an oft-repeated and tremendous illusion. They have cried lies even to this sign, and have followed their low desires. Yet every decree of God shall certainly come to pass. And certainly there has already come to them the important accounts concerning the fate of the ancients in which there is provision of abstaining from obstinately following the wrong course. And wherein is profound and perfect wisdom, but the warnings were of no avail to them. Therefore turn away from them and await the day when the summoner will summon them to a most disagreeable thing. 
while with the sense of remorse, their eyes will be downcast. They will come forth from their graves as though they were swarms of locusts being scattered about. Rushing headlong towards the summoner, the disbelievers will say, This is a hard day. The people of Noah cried lies to our prophets before them. Accordingly, they rejected our servant and said about him, A madman, and one who is spurned and chided by our idols. At last he prayed to his Lord, saying, I am overcome, so come to my help to defend me. Thereupon we opened the gates of the clouds and allowed water to pour down in torrents. And we caused the land to burst with gushing springs, so that the two waters gathered together for a great purpose of divine punishment that was decreed. And we bore him on that ark which was made of planks and nails. It floated on the waters of the deluge under our supervision and care. This punishment was for the sake of him who had been denied. And we left this incident of deluge for the succeeding generations to serve them as a sign. But is there anyone who would take heed? Then behold how terrible was my punishment and how true my warning. Indeed, we have made the Qur'an easy for admonition and to understand, follow, and remember. But is there anyone who would take heed? The tribe of Ad, too, cried lies to the warning of the prophet Hud. And behold, how terrible was my punishment, and how true my warning. We let loose upon them a clamorous and alarmingly furious wind on a day when the sky remained red like copper till long. It, the howling wind, tore the people away as though they were the hollowed stumps of uprooted palm trees. Behold how terrible was my punishment, and how true my warning. And we have indeed made the Qur'an easy for admonition, and to understand, follow, and remember. But is there anyone who would take heed? The tribe of Thamud, too in rejecting Saleh, cried lies to all the divine warners. And they said, Shall we follow a man who hails from ourselves and is all alone? If we do indeed, we in that case would be involved in a great error and suffering from insanity. Is it that from amongst all of us? The reminder has been revealed to him alone? Nay, what he says is wrong. He is an impudent liar and self-conceited. God said to Saleh, Very shortly shall they know who is the impudent liar and self-conceited. We, in order to distinguish the good from the bad of them, are going to send a she-camel in a state that she is not to be interfered with in any way. Therefore, wait till the end comes, and patiently persevere against their insults. And inform them that their water is to be shared by them, and the she-camel, each time of drinking to be attended by everyone in turns. Thereupon they called their comrade who seized her, quite unlawfully, with the help of others, and hamstrung her, and they were then overtaken by a calamity. And behold, how terrible then was my punishment, and how true my warning. And we let loose a single and sudden blast against them, and they became crushed like dry twigs, whittled down by an enclosure maker. And we have made the Qur'an easy for admonition, and to understand, follow, and remember. But is there anyone who would take heed? Lot's people, also in rejecting Lot, cried lies to all the divine warners. We let loose a destructive storm upon all of them except the family of Lot, whom we delivered through our mercy from the punishment by early dawn. It was a favor from us. That is how we reward those who give thanks. While he, Lot, had warned them of our seizure with punishment, but they doubted this warning and disputed over it and they deceitfully sought to turn him away from his guests. 
So we put a covering on their eyes, and we said to them, Now taste my punishment and suffer the consequences of ignoring my warning. And certainly there overtook them early in the morning a lasting punishment. Now taste my punishment and suffer the consequences of ignoring my warning. And indeed we have made the Qur'an easy for admonition and to understand, follow, and remember. But is there anyone who would take heed? And surely the warners came to the people of Pharaoh also. But they cried lies to all our signs. So we took them to task, such as befitted the mighty, the powerful. Are those of you who are disbelievers better than these? Or have you been promised amnesty from punishment in the previous scriptures? Or do Meccan disbelievers say, We are a united force capable of defending one another against any calamity? Soon that united force shall surely be routed. They will turn their backs and flee before the Muslims. The promised hour of their complete discomfiture is their appointed time. The fact is that the hour will be grievously calamitous and most bitter. Surely the guilty are involved in clear error and suffering from insanity. On that day they shall be dragged on their faces into the fire of the battle. It will be said to them, Suffer the smite of fire. Verily all things have we created in correct proportion and measure. Our command is at once carried out by only one word as quickly as the twinkling of an eye. We have surely destroyed gangs of people like you, O oh, disbelievers before. But is there anyone who would take heed? Everything they did is recorded in scrolls of deeds. And everything, small and big, has been noted down. That is why those who became secure against evil and were dutiful to God shall be amidst gardens and bounties, occupying positions of honor and excellence with the omnipotent sovereign. El Rahman, the Most Gracious, with the name of Allah, the Most Gracious, the Ever Merciful, the Most Gracious God has taught this Qur'an. He created human being and taught him the art of intelligent and distinct speech. The sun and the moon pursue their scheduled courses on their axis according to a fixed reckoning. And the stemless plants and the trees humbly submit to his will. And he raised the heaven high and set up the law of harmony and balance. He explains this to you, that you should not violate the law of harmony and balance. Hold balance with justice, giving everyone his due avoiding extremes, and do not disturb the law of harmony in the least. And he has set the earth for common good of all his creatures. In it there are all kinds of fruit and palm trees laden with sheathed clusters and the grains with the husk coverings and fragrant flowery plants. Which of the benefactions of your Lord will you twain, believers and disbelievers, then deny? He created human being from the essence extracted from dry ringing clay, like a piece of baked pottery with the faculty of speech and possessing pliant and submissive nature. And he created the jinn from a flame of fire, possessing fiery nature. Which of the benefactions of your Lord will you twain then deny? He is the Lord of the two east and Lord of the two west. Which of the benefactions of your Lord will you twain then deny? He has let the two bodies of water flow freely. They will one day join together. At present, a barrier stands between them. They cannot encroach one upon the other. Which of the benefactions of your Lord will you twain then deny? Pearls and corals come out of both these seas. 
which of the benefactions of your Lord will you twain then deny? And to him belong these ships, raised aloft in the sea like mountain peaks. Which of the benefactions of your Lord will you twain then deny? All that is on it is subject to decay and doomed to pass away. But only the majesty of your Lord and that which is under the care of your Lord, the Lord of glory and honor, endures forever. Which of the benefactions of your Lord will you twain then deny? All of the rational beings that are in the heavens and on the earth do beg of him. Every moment he manifests himself in a new state of glory. Which of the benefactions of your Lord will you twain then deny? We shall reckon with you, O you two big groups of the righteous and the rebellious. Which of the benefactions of your Lord will you twain then deny? O body of the jinn, the fiery natured, and the ordinary people. If you have the power and the capacity to go beyond the confines of the heavens and the earth, then do go. But you will not be able to go unless you have the necessary and unusual power. Which of the benefactions of your Lord will you twain then deny? Flames of fire, smoke, and molten copper will be let loose upon you, and you will not be able to defend yourselves. Which of the benefactions of your Lord will you twain then deny? And when the heaven splits up and turns crimson like red hide, how will you fare then? Which of the benefactions of your Lord will you twain then deny? On that day, none of people nor of jinn will be questioned about his sin. Which of the benefactions of your Lord will you twain then deny? The guilty will be known by their appearance and the expressions on their faces. Then they will be seized by their forelocks and the feet. Which of the benefactions of your Lord will you twain then deny? They will be told, this is the Gehenna that the guilty have cried lies to. They will take turns restlessly between it, the hellfire, and boiling hot liquid. Which of the benefactions of your Lord will you twain then deny? There are two gardens of bliss, here and the hereafter, for such as fear the time when they will stand before the judgment seat of their Lord to account for their deeds. Which of the benefactions of your Lord will you twain then deny? Both the gardens of paradise are abounding in varieties of trees and rich greenery accompanied with delightful comforts. Which of the benefactions of your Lord will you twain then deny? There are two springs flowing free in each of them. Which of the benefactions of your Lord will you twain then deny? In both of these gardens, there are fruit of all kinds in two varieties. Which of the benefactions of your Lord will you twain then deny? They, the owners of paradise, will be reclining on couches over carpets, the linings of which will be of thick brocade, and the ripe fruit of both the gardens will be bending so low as to be within their easy reach to pluck. Which of the benefactions of your Lord will you twain then deny? There they shall have chaste and modest maidens, restraining their glances to look at them only, whom in this state neither man nor jinn has ever touched before them. Which of the benefactions of your Lord will you twain then deny? These maidens will look as if they were made of rubies and small pearls. Which of the benefactions of your Lord will you twain then deny? Goodness alone is the reward of goodness. Which of the benefactions of your Lord will you twain then deny? And besides these two paradises, there are two other gardens. Which of the benefactions of your Lord will you twain then deny? Both of them are dark green with thick foliage. Which of the benefactions of your Lord will you twain then deny? Both of these two have two springs gushing forth. Which of the benefactions of your Lord will you twain then deny? Both of these two have all kinds of fruit and dates and pomegranates. 
which of the benefactions of your Lord will you twain then deny? Therein will be maidens pious and beautiful. Which of the benefactions of your Lord will you twain then deny? Pure and chaste houris, confined to their goodly pavilions, enjoying the shade of God's mercy. Which of the benefactions of your Lord will you twain then deny? Whom neither man nor jinn has ever touched before them in this state. Which of the benefactions of your Lord will you twain then deny? The owners of paradise will be reclining on green cushions and rich carpets of lovely beauty. Which of the benefactions of your Lord will you twain then deny? Blessed be the name of your Lord, the master of glory and honor. el Waqia, The Great Event With the name of Allah, the most gracious, the ever merciful. Beware of the time when the inevitable and the promised event shall come to pass. There is no denying its coming to pass. This event shall be lowering the status of some and exalting that of others. This will take place when the earth shall be shaken with a violent shaking, and the mountain shall be completely shattered so that they shall all be reduced to particles of dust scattered about. And at that time, you shall be sorted out into three distinct categories. First, those that are blessed, how lucky the blessed will be. And then those that are wretched, how miserable the condition of the wretched will be. And third, those that are foremost in faith, they are by all means the foremost in the hereafter. It is they who have really achieved nearness to their Lord. They shall abide in gardens of bliss. A large party of them will hail from the early believers, while a few of them will hail from the later ones. They will be in the garden, seated on couches inlaid with gold and precious jewels. They will be reclining thereupon and sitting face to face. Their young sons will go round about them, who will remain as young as ever, carrying goblets and shining beakers and cups full of pure and clean drink. They will get no headache or giddiness from their drinks, nor will they be inebriated and talk nonsense, and carrying such fruits as they choose, and with flesh of birds exactly to their taste. And there will be present fair houris with lovely large eyes, chased like pearls, well guarded and well preserved. Such shall be the reward of their good deeds. There they will hear no idle talk, no sinful speech. But all that they hear on all sides will be good and pure words of salutation. Peace be, peace be. Those that are blessed, how lucky the blessed will be. They shall abide amidst the land of thornless sidra, the low tree, a symbol of bliss, and in the garden of clustered bananas, and in extended shades, and near water falling from heights, and amidst abundant fruit, the season of which is not limited, and they are never forbidden and they will have noble spouses. Verily we have made them, women, excellent, and have raised them into a special new creation, and have made them virgins, pure and undefiled. They are the loving ones of their husbands, suiting to their ages, and matching them in every respect. They are meant for the blessed ones. This group will consist of a large party from the earlier people of Islam and a large party from the later ones. But as for those that are wretched, how sad will be the plight of those that are wretched. They shall dwell in the midst of painfully scorching winds and scalding water and under the shadow of black smoke, which is neither cool to refresh nor honorable nor of any good to please at all. 
They, of course, lived a life of ease and abundance before this in the present world. But they persisted in extreme sinfulness. And they were wont to say, Is it that when we are dead and reduced to dust and bones, we shall then be raised to life again? And is it that our fathers of yore shall also be raised to a new life with us? Say, most surely the earlier people and the later ones shall all be gathered together at the fixed time of an appointed day. Then, O oh, you that have gone astray and cried lies to the truth, you will certainly eat of the zakum tree, a symbol of agony, and will fill your bellies with it. Then you shall drink over it boiling water, lapping it down like the lapping of the camels that suffer from insatiable thirst. This will be there of the wretched ones, entertainment on the day of requital. It is we who have created you the first time. Why do you not then realize the reality of the resurrection? Have you given thought to the sperm drop, your life germ, that you emit? Is it you that created yourselves, or are we the creator of it? It is we that have ordained death for all of you, and we cannot be stopped from it, from replacing you with beings similar to you, or from evolving you into a form which is unknown to you at present. And you certainly know of the first evolution, then why do you not reflect? Have you ever given thought to that which you sow? Is it you that cause it growth, or is it we who are the growers? If we, so pleased, we could reduce it to chaff before it is ripe and ready to be harvested, and then you would remain lamenting and talking bitterly, and saying, Surely we have been left indebted. Rather, we have been left with nothing. Indeed, we are finished. Have you ever given thought to the water that you drink? Is it you who bring it down from the clouds, or is it we who rain it? If we so pleased, we could make it brackish. Then why do you not give thanks? Have you given thought to the fire which you kindle? Is it you who produce the tree for kindling it into fire, or is it we the producer of it? We have made it a source of admonition for the people and a means to live upon for the needy and the wayfarer. Glorify, therefore, the name of your Lord, the incomparably great. As to me, I swear by the places and times of the revelation of the portions of the Quran, and behold, it is a mighty oath, if you only care to know that this is most surely a holy Qur'an bestowing bounteous blessings of God in a book well preserved in all its purity. No one can achieve true insight into it except those who are purified by leading righteous lives. It is a revelation from the Lord of the worlds. Is it this divine discourse that you are the deniers of? And do you make the denial of it your lot? Why then, when the soul of the dying person reaches the throat, and you are at that time looking on helplessly, and when we are nearer to him than you, though you do not see, why then, if you are not governed by any authority and are not to be requited, you do not bring it, the soul, back to the body of the dying person? if you are truthful in your claim of being independent of the supreme authority. And if he, the departed person, belongs to those who have attained nearness to God and are his chosen ones, then he will have happiness, comfort, and plenty, and a garden of bliss. And if he, the departed one, belongs to the blessed people, then it will be said of him, Peace be upon you ever. O oh, you of the blessed people! But if he belongs to those who deny the truth and are steeped in error, then he will be offered boiling water for an entertainment and burning in hell.
Verily, this fact is a perfect certainty, not merely a certainty by inference or sight. Therefore, glorify the name of your Lord, the incomparably great. El Hadid, the Iron, with the name of Allah, the Most Gracious, the Ever Merciful. Whatever is in the heavens and the earth declares the glory of Allah, and He is the Almighty, the All Wise. The kingdom of the heavens and the earth belongs to Him. He gives life and causes death, and He is the possessor of power to do all that He will. He is from the very first, there was nothing before him, and he will exist to the last, there will be nothing after him. And when nothing remains, he will remain, he being an eternal being. He is the supreme being, subordinate to no one, and whereas he comprehends everything, he is incomprehensible. He has full knowledge of everything. It is he who created the heavens and the earth in six aeons, and he is established on the throne of power. He knows what goes down into the earth, and what comes out of it, and what descends from above, and what ascends to it. He is with you wherever you may be. Allah is watchful of all that you do. The kingdom of the heavens and the earth belongs to him. All matters are referred to Allah for his judgment. He causes the night to gain on the day in one season, and he causes the day to gain on the night in the other season. He has full knowledge of the inmost secrets of hearts. O people, believe in Allah and his messenger, and spend in the cause of Allah out of the possessions he has entrusted you with as his vicegerent. Indeed, there awaits a great reward for such of you as believe and spend in his cause. What is wrong with you that you do not believe in Allah, though the messenger invites you to believe in your Lord, and though he has already bound you to a covenant? Now is the time if you care to believe. It is he who sends down clear signs to his servant that he may lead you from all kinds of darkness into the light of faith. And behold, Allah is compassionate and ever merciful to you. What is wrong with you that you do not spend in the way of Allah? For all that the heavens and the earth contain shall finally revert to Allah. Those of you who spent and fought in the cause of Allah before the victory of Hudaybiyah cannot be equal to those who joined the ranks later. They are higher in rank than those who spent and fought afterwards, after the truth had gained ground. Yet Allah has promised a good reward to them all. Allah is well aware of what you do. Who is he that will separate a handsome portion of his possessions to give in the cause of Allah? Let him remember he will increase it manifold to repay it to him many times over. Indeed, there awaits such a one a generous and honorable reward. Think of the day when you will see the believing men and the believing women, that their faith having become a torch of light, is advancing rapidly in front of them and on their right sides. It will be said to them, Glad tidings to you this day. There await you gardens of paradise, served with running streams. The recipients of glad tidings will abide therein forever. This indeed is a mighty achievement. That day, the hypocritical men and hypocritical women will say to those who believe, Wait for us so that we might obtain some illumination from your light. It will be said to them, Go back if you can and seek for light. Then a wall with a gateway will be set up, separating them and the believers. The inside of it will be all mercy, where the righteous have to go, and the outside of it shall be facing torment, where the hypocrites have to stay. These hypocrites will call out to those believers, Were we not with you in the worldly life? They will reply, Yes, but you let yourselves fall into temptations, 
and you waited uselessly for our destruction, and you doubted about the truth. In fact, your vain desires deceived you till the decree of Allah about your punishment came to be implemented, and the arch-deceiver deceived you in respect of Allah. So this day no ransom shall be accepted from you, nor from those who disbelieved. Hellfire is the final abode of you all. That is your friendly protector, and very evil is that resort. Is it not yet time for those who believe that their hearts should feel humbled at the mention of the name of Allah and at the truth that has been revealed to them in the form of the Qur'an? and that they do not become like those who were given the scripture before them, but their hearts hardened because a long period of time passed over them, enjoying the favors of Allah. As for their present state, they are mostly transgressors. Know that Allah brings the inhabitants of the earth to life after their death. We have indeed explained our messages to you, that you may abstain from evil deeds. Verily, as to the men who give alms, and the women who give alms, and those who perform excellent deeds for the sake of Allah, their recompense shall be increased manifold for them, and there awaits them a generous and honorable reward. And for those who believe in Allah and His messengers, they alone are the truthful people and faithful witnesses in the sight of their Lord. They will have their full reward and their light. But those who disbelieve and cry lies to our commandments are the very inmates of hell. Know that the life of this world is but a sport, one ton, an empty show, a source of boasting among yourselves, and an emulous quest for more riches and children. It is like the rain the vegetation produced whereby pleases the cultivators. Then it, the vegetation, blooms and flourishes so that you can see it turn yellow on ripening. Then there comes a time when it becomes worthless chaff. But the hereafter promises both a severe punishment for the wicked and for the righteous there is protection from Allah and his pleasure. The life of this world is nothing but a temporary enjoyment of delusive things. O people, advance quickly, outstripping one another towards the protection from your Lord and towards a garden, the extensiveness of which is beyond measure, as the extensiveness of the heaven and the earth. It has been prepared for those who believe in Allah and His messengers, that protection is Allah's grace and bounty. He grants it to such of those who wish to attain it and strive for it. Allah is the Lord of immense grace and bounty. No disaster befalls either on the earth or in your own selves, but it forms part of the divine law before we bring it into being. Indeed, it is easy for Allah to make such a law. Allah has apprised you of this that you may neither grieve over that good which is lost to you, nor exult because of that which he has granted you. Allah has no love for those who are haughty and boastful. Neither has he love for those who practice niggardliness themselves, and also enjoin others to be niggardly. He who turns his back upon his commandment should be aware. Verily, Allah is self-sufficient, free from all needs and worthy of all praise in his own right. Certainly we sent our messengers with clear proofs, and we also sent down with them the code of shariat, law, and justice, and the balance, the practice of the prophet and right use of the book of God, so that people might conduct themselves with equity and justice. And we have given to them iron, which has great strength, and wherein is material for violent warfare and for many other uses for people. All this has been done that Allah may distinguish those who help him and his messengers without having seen him. Indeed, Allah is all-powerful, almighty. Indeed, we sent Noah and Abraham, and we set up among their children a system of prophethood and the book 
So some of them followed true guidance, but many of them became transgressors. Then we caused a series of our messengers, one after the other, to follow them closely in their footsteps. And we caused Jesus, son of Mary, to follow them. And we gave him, Jesus, the evangel. And we placed compassion and mercy in the hearts of those who followed him. But as for monasticism, they invented it themselves. We did not enjoin it upon them. They started monastic life to seek Allah's pleasure, but they did not observe it as faithfully as it should have been observed. Yet we duly rewarded such of them as truly believed, but many of them were transgressors. O you who believe, take Allah as a shield and believe in his messenger. If you do so, Allah will grant you double the share of his mercy in this world and the hereafter and will provide for you a light with the help of which you will advance forward, and will grant you protection against pitfalls, and Allah is great protector, ever merciful. You will be so treated lest the people of the scripture should think that they, the Muslims, have no control over the attainment of the grace and bounty of Allah, and so that they should know that grace and bounty is entirely in the hands of Allah. He bestows it upon such as wishes to be granted and strives for it. And Allah is the Lord of immense grace and bounty.